the Steam Next Festival is live, so you have 7 days to check out hundreds of demos, where my recommendations begin with Robodunk, a 2v2 roguelite sports title that is inspired by games like NBA Jam, only where you're controlling customizable robots instead. I love the visuals here, where the characters look like they are toy figurines, where the roguelite structure and variety of upgrades from run to run should provide plenty of variety. Some of you might not know this, but I do enjoy cooking, so any food-related games or content is always of interest to me, with Venba being one of interest, where you play as an Indian mum who immigrated to Canada in the 1980s having to cook traditional food while telling a larger story about family. First off, the visuals are gorgeous, where I applaud that their unconventional choice of protagonist, where food and cooking is at the heart of many cultures. I've been keeping an eye on this, where the developers talk about experimenting with and uncovering pages and secrets of a family cookbook that was handed down, but this looks like an absolute delight. This video is brought to you by Back to the Dawn, a pixel art prison break survival RPG that looks awesome, allowing you to unleash your inner Michael Schofield. You play as a wrongly incarcerated journalist, framed and sent to prison, now having to find a way to survive while exhausting all options in order to get out, both legally through your lawyer and the outside investigation, and perhaps, if left with no choice, to do things the hard way. Things will not be easy since you're entangled in the web of dark conspiracy where powerful people want you remaining in prison, so the odds are against you. However, within the prison itself, you can form bonds with the other inmates as well as to take advantage of various rivalries, doing prison stuff like hitting the weights or doing work which blends nicely into the RPG elements. As part of the Steam Mix Festival, there is a playable demo of this game which you can find via the link in the description below, and in conjunction with that, the developers are hosting some exclusive giveaways for the duration of the festival, with cool prizes such as Steam gift cards and exclusive game merch. So find out more about that on their Twitter account which you can find linked below as well, and as always, wishlist the game to help the developer out. This title made a splash during the Summer Showcase season since it is from the lead gameplay designer of Limbo and Inside, with the similar single word title of this game being Cocoon. You play as a human bug person, adventuring in worlds within worlds, jumping from one to the next in order to unravel a cosmic mystery, where orbs and how you use them are central to this game. There's platforming and surprisingly, what appears to be some sort of combat mechanic against monstrous guardians, but I don't think that directly translates into combat, but rather is part of the puzzles, where it has previewed well in hands-on demos for press, so I'm curious about this. So, you want to know how it all began. About everything. The homes we built. I was very confused when I first came to know of Cataclysmo, since their review trailer did not show any gameplay at all, definitely not something I would recommend, but they have since followed up with this, being a survival city builder which the developer has described as Lego crossed with the uh, billions, where you're constructing your own fortress and fighting off swarms of enemies, where interestingly, this comes to us from the developer of Moonlighter who has grown quite large, even recently releasing the League of Legends spin-off titled The Mage Seeker. Well, it didn't start with us, friend. It began with her. Speaking of Moonlighter, of course I have to give a special mention to Cuisineer, an action roguelite crossed with a tavern management game that comes to us from a Singaporean developer, where it looks great and should be fun.
you are a young adventurer turned restauranteur who inherits the family restaurant which is in debt, where she must now venture out, slay monsters to get ingredients, and then cook up a storm and serve your customers to run a sustainable business. The action and art looks decent, but I'm just a sucker for roguelites crossed with some sort of meta progression shop or restaurant or hamlet to upgrade, which is why this game appeals to me with quite the variety of enemies and biomes to explore as well. The delicious looking food is a highlight, with local favourites such as Pupia or Kaya Toast in this, so there's both local and international flavours to the game and is in line with the food thing that I mentioned earlier in this video. One of my most anticipated games is Moonstone Island, primarily because of its pixel art, but this is a farm simulation RPG title with creature collecting, Zelda style action adventure dungeons and puzzles, as well as card based combat, looking like one of the most intriguing mixture of genres that I have to see for myself. I'm a big Stardew Valley fan and nothing has come close, but this looks to be a great alternative in the space where the alchemy slant is interesting as you're spending one year away from your family on this training adventure. The variety of creatures is what I'm excited to check out, also having the expected villager relationships systems, and there are many such characters to get to know, looking like the complete package and should be out later this year. She ruins my plan. Find her and bring her to me. A challenge. I like that. A newly announced title that looks excellent is On Guard, a self-described swashbuckling action adventure game where you play as a daring adventurer on her various escapades as she seeks to oppose the tyranny of the cruel Count Duke and as a hero to the people. There's certainly some Zorro flair in this game, but where our heroine has no need to hide her face with the sword play, action, and even platforming being of interest. Interestingly, there is a sense of humour to the game, both in writing as well as the zany cast of characters, so it's not a blood and guts type of game, but rather is more family friendly. The next title from the developers of the chill puzzle city builder Islanders was also revealed recently and is a minimalist RTS defense title named Thronefall. The developers own subtitle to this is a strategy game without all the headache, which of course has its pros and cons, but where they are attempting to streamline the strategy game experience. Build your base up in the day and defend it at night, all while controlling a player avatar with real-time combat, looking stylish and excellent and is one to watch given the pedigree. I have to see this game in action for myself since this title is wholly unique, being a roguelite combat title where you need to wire up your own modular synthesizer and to use their abilities to defeat your enemies. There's nothing quite like this on the market with the closest example that I can think of being the signal state which makes rogue voltage one of interest, not to mention excellent art with more of my roguelite recommendations here. 